some of the most bizarre and some of the most beautiful formations in the entire galaxy are usually formed by pulsars. For example, the iconic pulsar nebula formed by the crab pulsar, or the super strange hand of God that's also the result of a pulsar nebula forming a really bizarre structure. And that's on top of so many other mysteries around pulsars that we're still trying to understand and still trying to explore. For example, the discovery of these super strange radio lines all over the Milky Way galaxy, thousands of which have been discovered all over the place, has now also been linked to various pulsars, as we've discussed in some of the videos in the description. And the discovery of several strange structures, resembling bullets moving through some kind of a nebula, also seem to be the result of fast-moving pulsars, which seem to have acquired their velocity as a result of an ancient, powerful supernova. This is the famous cosmic cannonball. And even more recently, NASA identified this really strange structure, now referred to as the cosmic guitar. Mostly because of a very strange shape resembling a guitar, which seems to be once again formed by a fast-moving pulsar escaping some kind of an ancient region, where once again it was probably formed by some kind of a supernova. This is one of the more recent discoveries coming out of NASA's Chandra Space Telescope. Not to mention that the first exoplanets ever discovered were also found around a pulsar as well. This is the famous PSR B1257 system. And so with so many strange, bizarre and somewhat difficult to explain discoveries, pulsars have always been some of the most mysterious objects in cosmology, and researchers are always eager to learn so much more about them just because they seem to form so much weird stuff. And while well, in this video we're going to discuss one of the recent discoveries that possibly solves at least one mystery, but in the process discovers something else about pulsars that is kind of surprising and even shocking. They might have mountains. And mountains that seem to be made out of something super super strange. And so let's talk about this in a bit more detail, but first let's start with the slightly different study in regards to the famous crab pulsar I showed you previously. One of the most studied objects in the night skies, and the object that was created in 1054 AD by a massive supernova 6200 light years away from planet Earth. And well, because this is a pulsar, naturally it has to pulsate. And here it seems to do so 30 times per second. Here's a slow motion video of this, taken by the researchers from the Cambridge University. But turns out that this pulsar also produces some other bizarre patterns that up until recently were kind of difficult to explain. And specifically it seems to produce these zebra-like patterns that only recently have finally been explained in a study in the description. Turns out that this is a diffraction pattern, or basically a type of an interference, caused by different levels of plasma around the pulsar's magnetosphere. In other words, by seeing this pattern, it now becomes possible to kind of scan the environment around the pulsar, which in theory should help us produce some kind of a three-dimensional image of this, once someone figures out how to use this. And so in other words, by using these very precise signals, and by seeing deviations inside the signals, it starts to become possible to figure out what happens around the pulsar, allowing us to directly map this object by seeing how these signals differ every single time. And it's really always been these signals that taught us the most about pulsars. Mostly because here, even minute deviations usually tell us that something is going on or something is very different. And while in the last few years, because of the advances in radio telescopes, researchers started to discover this somewhat bizarre mystery. Some of the pulsars were pulsating way too slow. As in, they should not even be pulsing at all, yet they were. And that's because based on modern theories, the only reason neutron stars even pulsate is because they're spinning so fast. In other words, the pulsar's energy comes from its spinning motion, and these radio emissions are only produced because the pulsar is spinning fast enough. And based on the modern calculations, it's actually believed that the pulsar has to spin at least once every 10 seconds to produce these radio pulsations. So basically, if a pulsar starts spinning too slow, more than once per 10 seconds, it reaches what's known as the pulsar death line. Technically, this is when the radio emissions stop and the pulsar just becomes a regular neutron star. Which is what scientists believe happens to pretty much most pulsars with time. Eventually, they lose their rotation speed and eventually they become quiet. And that actually makes sense because if this didn't happen, we would be seeing millions if not billions of pulsars all over the place. 
because based on the age of the Milky Way galaxy and based on the amount of certain types of supernova, we do expect at least a billion neutron stars in the entire galaxy. But we've only discovered just over 3000 pulsars in the Milky Way, suggesting that they do eventually stop pulsating and become quiet. Here's roughly what the modern map of these pulsars looks like if you were to look at the entire Milky Way. But as I mentioned, for some reason, in the last few years, researchers also discovered a few pulsars that were just spinning way too slow. For example, one of the pulsars, approximately 2600 light years away from us, seems to only emit radio pulses once every 18 minutes. This is now referred to as the long period transient. And quite a few of them have been discovered in the last few years, with periods ranging from minutes to hours. And though some of these objects have been explained as potentially being white dwarfs and not neutron stars, in many cases they're just way too powerful to be anything but a neutron star. And so because a handful of these objects have not been discovered, researchers have been trying to figure out how this is possible, what's actually going on, but more importantly figure out what mechanism is responsible for producing these radio waves. Because here this goes beyond explanations involving pulsars, and the rotational energy is just not enough to produce these signals. And here we have at least a couple of new studies that possibly present us with certain explanations. And so in this first study, we have a detection of a pulsar with the 41 second period that bridges the gap between classical pulsars and these long period transients. And so because of this intriguing object, researchers started to look for more and did actually discover quite a few of them, suggesting that there seem to be quite a few of these objects that are difficult to explain using classical explanations, but also seem to represent this bizarre missing link connecting various pulsating objects. And it was really this recent study that you can find in the description that potentially provides us with maybe one explanation that kind of makes sense. Based on two more examples of these slow moving pulsars, researchers realized that it's possible for these neutron stars to produce these signals if they're not perfectly spherical. Or to be more exact, if they contain deformations on the surface, deformations resembling super tiny mountains. And because neutron stars are generally only about 10 to 12 kilometers across, here when we say mountains, we're talking about objects that are only one centimeter in height, or basically just a fraction of an inch. And so here these super tiny mountains would technically be enough to produce these really bizarre signals. And that's because on a typical neutron star, the gravity is at least 100 billion times stronger than planet Earth. And because of this, even a tiny feature, millimeters or centimeters in size, is going to produce dramatic effects. And so in this recent study, researchers from the Peking University developed a computer model in order to find out how these mountains might affect electric fields around various pulsars. And turns out that by having these tiny mountains, it would start affecting the path of positrons and photons, with mountains that have steep slopes dramatically amplifying local electric fields, allowing these neutron stars to once again become pulsars, because suddenly these particles would be accelerated to tremendous speeds. And so because of this particle acceleration, various electrons and positrons start to create radio waves, resembling pulsating waves once again. And so these very unusual deformations on the surface in theory can concentrate the electric field so much that it can produce a powerful beam on any neutron star. And so even neutron stars that rotate really slowly will suddenly reach the energy threshold to trigger radio emissions once again. And if this idea is correct, it can provide certain clues about what's happening on the surface of these bizarre objects. Specifically, what they're made out of. Because in order for these mountains to survive and not to become completely flattened, they have to be made out of something incredibly strong. And that's because ridiculously powerful particles that crash into the neutron star all the time will eventually erode any matter present on the surface, making it super super smooth. Unless this is made out of something really strange. For example, the strangeon matter. An exotic form of matter that's bound together by strong force and is extremely difficult to destroy by any interaction. And that's because most particles are usually connected through electromagnetic forces. And so your typical matter and your typical molecules, which usually rely on electromagnetic forces to stay together, would not produce enough energy to destroy these strangeon particles. And here strangeon is kind of similar to a nucleon. Nucleon is what's inside of us, and that's usually made out of protons and neutrons. But the strangeon would be a combination of strange quarks and up and down quarks. 
You can read a little bit more about this and some of the propositions about this in the study on the strange on matter or the strange on stars. Both studies are in the description below and basically discuss how this unusual matter might explain quite a lot of things we see about neutron stars, proposing the strange on stars and even hybrid stars as a new type of an object. And so the idea here is kind of similar. Maybe by having these strange on particles that are strong enough to survive pretty much anything, they might start forming various mountains on neutron stars, which then produce the radio signals we seem to observe. And if the researchers behind the study are correct, it can also explain a lot of other stuff we've been observing. For example, neutron star glitches. When various neutron stars suddenly change their spinning speed, it might actually be connected to either formation or destruction of various mountains on the surface. Or possibly formation of strange on matter from some of the regular matter on the surface. Likewise, this might also help us explain a lot of other mysteries, including fast radio bursts, which usually also come from neutron stars. And so in terms of theoretical propositions, this one is kind of exciting. But in order to prove this and in order to confirm if this is real or not, we definitely need more observations, more analysis, and a lot more detections of these bizarre stars by various powerful radio telescopes. And so until future analysis or future discoveries, that's pretty much it. Check out some of the other studies on neutron stars, pulsars, and magnetars in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, where you can find additional videos and videos without any ads, or where you can DM me directly. Maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership, where you get early access, and that also contains a few more videos, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.